it will start wait, wait. with um, Manuel Muru talking about uh, the Tetra coil, and then we have uh, talk about the Surpass Evolve C's clinical results uh, by Mario Martinez, and uh, Monica Keller will conclude by telling us about the uh, recent uh, publication in GNIS about the contour neurovascular system, uh, a multi-center European trial. Uh, we'll start with Manuel, please. Good morning. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Manuel Moreu. I come from, from Madrid, from Hospital Clinico San Carlos. And I'm going to talk about uh, Tetra coils. That is uh, same material, but the only thing that changed is the shape and showing you how important this shaping is for, for these specific coilings. These are my disclosures um, in scientific uh, way of showing them, really visual. And let's talk about small aneurysms, okay? Uh, normally we are facing these kind of small aneurysms in, do, in two standard situations. They are rupture and we are treating a subarachnoid a hemorrhage patient, or maybe it's a patient with another aneurysm that was ruptured, and we need to treat uh, several aneurysms that appear after that uh, first one. So what do we want? And I think that we all agree that what we want is uh, to have an oven in our own Angela, to be able to, to once that we have studied the aneurysm, then shape the coil, the side, the specific size of the, of the coil, and be able to occlude every aneurysm with only one coiling. Of course, we all know that that's uh, really complicated, but that's the idea that we all wanted to have. But what do we need? Well, we need something that allows us to occlude every small aneurysm and decrease the risk of the procedure. Because that's the problem with small aneurysms. If they are ruptured, then we have to decrease the risk and we have to be able to control our microcatheter and the coil because we don't have that much space to move inside the aneurysm. And if it's not ruptured on the other way, then the probability of that aneurysm rupture, we need to agree that's going to be really low. That's why the risk of the procedure should be really, really low. Tetra, it's uh, the new shaping coil of uh, Striker. And, well, we all know that when we change the shaping of the coils, we need to understand what size do we need to put in to, into every aneurysm. And that's not easy. With one uh, brand of coils, you will go a little bit up. With another ones, you need to go down. So, you know, understanding the coils. From, from Tetra, what we've learned in, in our experience is that we have to choose the Tetra coil that adapts better to the size of the aneurysm, okay? And if you are in doubt, then go a little bit higher than smaller. That's my experience. And this is how they behave. On the left, you have the target nano, and the, on the right, the target Tetra, same size same aneurysm inside a flow model. And you see how only changing the shape of the coil allows it to be much more stable inside the aneurysm without going out. So this kind of shaping uh, shows that it's really stable, not only for a small aneurysms, but also for the small aneurysms with quite a wide neck instead of a, or related to the size of this aneurysm. I'm going to show you three cases, uh, just to be really brief into the presentation. This is the first one. It's a post-surgical clipping aneurysm. And uh, then after clipping the aneurysm, there was a remain of uh, our aneurysm rest. So we decided to embolize with a Tetra 3 by 6. You can see here the, the small um, aneurysm on the bifurcation. On the MCA, this is the 3D and the sizing of, the, of that remain uh, or rest of the aneurysm, that the neck is quite wide related to the size of the, of the aneurysm. There, here we have the, the tetra. We did have a little bit of protrusion into the, the artery, but we put a balloon, and then after placing the balloon, it was really stable, really soft, the deployment, and after they inflating the balloon, 
there was no movement at all of that coil. So due to that, it was really, really nice, the result of this procedure. The conclusion said the microcatheter was really stable and the coil remained stable. And it's um, the excellent shape for wide neck small uh, aneurysms. And I'm talking about wide neck related to the size of the aneurysm. Of course, necks are not going to be five or six millimeters in size. Then another way of working with these, um, these tetra coils is finishing these small dog ears that appear at the end of any procedure. Here you have a big aneurysm, then we embolize it, and after that we place those uh, tetra coils just to end up the uh, finishing part of the, of the aneurysm with a really, really nice result. Uh, same conclusions for us. And the last case is a case that uh, Alfredo Casasco, that we work with him in the private practice, is my boss there, and um, he showed us uh, this case a couple of months ago, and I think that it was really interesting. So thanks to, to Alfredo, I don't know if he's, he's seeing us or, or not right now. Um, is this young woman uh, with a previous subarachnoid hemorrhage treated in, a, in another center, and then when she came to our institution, uh, she had a, a recanalization of, a, of the PCOM aneurysm, and then another one, small aneurysm into the MCA bifurcation. So we did a double treatment of the recanalized aneurysm and then go for the other one. Uh, I'm going to show you only the MCA aneurysm. As you can see here, it's quite small, quite big, uh, the neck related to the, to the size of the aneurysm. So we did not believe that uh, only a coil was going to be necessary. That's why we protected that branch with a micro, micro catheter, just to be sure that if we needed to place a stent, at least we are going to have that, that micro catheter already in position, as you can see there. Then we place the coil, and after placing it, we saw that it was really stable. So um, Alfredo decided to, to not put in the, the stent. And this is the result, as you can see. So the coil remained. Yes. I, I think that Alfredo says that it was magically stable, and I do agree with him. It was really stable. It behaves really well. And it's a, a nice case of how this new shaping works into these kind of aneurysms with these uh, post-treatment 3D uh, results. Uh, so what Tetra adds to, to my practice is that uh, or, or the main advantages is the stability of the microcatheter, um, the stability of the coil um, with the occlusion rate that seems uh, really good, or at least the same as with standard coiling. And then that the sizing matters to the aneurysm, and we need uh, uh, to learn how to size these coilings, as, as I told you, same size of the aneurysm or a little bit bigger. And thank you very much. This is our team in, in Madrid. Yeah, I have a question. So I'm here. Oh, I'm here. So hi. It's like, oh, uh, how are you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Hola. Uh, okay. So, uh, so this is a, if this is a superior configuration of the coil, so like, why don't the company just throw away the other coils and just make coils like this? If it's so much better, I mean, the rest can be garbage. <laughs> I do agree with you. <laughs> I think that the 3D configuration still has its uh, specific position for a little bit bigger aneurysm, but for these small ones, uh, this one is much better than, than 360 or, or any other configuration. So will they get rid of the rest uh, or will they not, don't, don't they don't like to compete with themselves? Is that the problem? I don't think they will re get rid of them because they already place those coils in lots of hospitals. but. The idea, I think, is it's, uh, to try to use these configurations more than the other ones. At least we stop, we stop using 360 for, for small aneurysms in my institution that we have the, the, both of the coils to make the decision. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but these, these are available only in limited sizes, right? Yeah, it, it will get a, up to 4.5 millimeters. Yes, that's what I'm saying only for small aneurysms, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Sal. Well, this talk is about the experience with the SARBUS uh, Evolve, and uh, I'm on behalf here of the SEEDS Study Committee, so, which is uh, led by my, my friend uh, Santi Ortega from Iowa. So thank you, Santi, for uh, sharing the data that we have. 
But at the end, all we know, the evolution of the Evolve in the last years have been some uh, uh, nice modifications, specifically after 2019, where we had the Evolve launching, uh, having a new device with a, a good trackability and opening at the end, and they changed a lot with the previous generation where we have more limitations with uh, navigation in this particular one, having the 64 wired device navigates really well, you know, that's the typical cases that you all have uh, personally for uh, a, a anti-articulation, the big reason I prefer cobalt chromium. We can discuss about that between cobalt chromium and nitinol. But anyway, at the end, uh, the opening and the uh, stability and the anchoring force uh, is really good. So uh, the valve experience, the valve is not new. They have uh, many, many patients treating worldwide. They are leaving the different uh, publications until now. Still they are very limited. Did you see the numbers here? The number of patients treated with other reports are still low. Uh, we have uh, a trial going on right now in the US. So we have uh, the results, I hope so soon. It's a prospective trial. Uh, there are different other uh, uh, experience prepared here. And this talk is about the specific study, which is called CIS. So CIS trial is uh, uh, the aim of the study is to analyze the safety and efficacy of the device in international real world cohort. It's a retrospective st uh, study in a prospective consecutive way. Again, this is uh, led by the team of, of, of Iowa here. And well, this is more or less the distribution of the centers. There are a lot of, I think, uh, 90% of the cases were performed in the US. There are some uh, smaller centers in, in Europe, like myself, uh, participating in. Uh, well, you see here the distribution of the centers. Uh, so thank you for all the participants for that. At the end, the inclusion criteria was wide, so every operator decided to include or not the patient here. At the end, there were adult patients and any anterior or posterior circulation aneurysms treated. And the primary outcome, as I uh, said before, is that the complete, uh, complete aneurysms uh, measured by Raymond class one, which uh, we can discuss also if it's the most appropriate scale to measure for the better, probably not, but it was in this case. Uh, the, one of the main things of this study, you know, being retrospective, which is a limitation, the good thing is that we have a core lab adjudication. So it's not self-reported by the centers. We have a two independent imaging reviewers analyzing the images. So at the end, it's, it's one of the, uh, the powerful, this study here. And the primary uh, endpoint in terms of safety was to measure the major risk in the hemorrhagic events. And for sure, we have another secondary endpoints. So, the numbers are really robust. So there were more than 300 patients included, 332 aneurysms. So at the end, it's a big database. So uh, there we are preparing some sub-analysis coming after this study. So we will have a lot of information. So, uh, well, these patients didn't differ from others' uh, experience. Uh, hypertension and tobacco use were the more significant um, risk factors. So in terms of distribution, anterior were dominant, or posterior for sure. And uh, as other uh, preliminary trials with other devices, most of the aneurysm were saccular and anterior for the purpose of the study is to measure or to analyze the safety. You know? So we include uh, the typical aneurysm, the more frequent aneurysm that are treated in all institutions, which is the paraphthalmic, uh, you know, posterior communicator artery um, uh, level. One of the discussions what we can have after this presentation is, is about the size of the aneurysm. So you see that mass, the vast majority were less than 10 millimeters. So they were now focused on large giant aneurysm. So the device implantation was successful in 100% of the cases. There were a, uh, there were a significant number of uh, radial access, more than 20%. That talks about the trackability. Adjusting coils, only less than 10% of the cases. This is true that there is more uh, around 20% of recanalization. So at the end, the uh, number of, of coils, you know, adjusted may, maybe around uh, 10 or 15%. And this is the results in terms of efficacy, complete occlusion at one year. So it's a long-term study is 73%, which is on the line of other studies for like Premier, say for others, they have a really significant occlusion rate. And we, if we analyze uh, between total and subtotal, so probably are uh, around 88% of the cases that are, we have a good outcome on here in terms of uh, imaging. The safety points, the ischemic events were 2.1% of the cases, so they were really, really low, but it's true that it's uh, for a small aneurysms. And one of the uh, points to analyze also the inner stenosis uh, numbers. So we have more than 70% of the inner stenosis, but the number were really low, 144%. And those cases were non-symptomatic. So at the end, it's, I think, in the, in the same line that the other uh, serious. 
There were different analyses coming. I think one of the most interesting ones is what happened when you have a branch arising from the aneurysm. Uh, uh, on theory, there were not a significant difference in terms of occlusion rate, but we will have another sub-analysis coming because it's another point to discuss. So in conclusion, uh, we have the, the, the longer right now case series of EVOLVE, so it's more than 300 again, so good news. We are still waiting for the ongoing prospective trial, but right now with the results, we can say that for this specific location and reasons, the EVOLVE device is safe and is effective. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, let me know. <laughs> By the way, it's already published, so you can review all the data in GenIS, so yeah. Uh, Monica, can you please? I just would like to show you the, um, I would say, more or less European study of the contour. These are the collaborating centers. It were the same that uh, started doing the first in men study, and we collected our cases uh, over time. So uh, in total, uh, we had uh, 20, 279 uh, cases included in this study. With the normal distribution, as you can see, mostly of them were ACOMs and MCAs. Um, the contour size mostly used was seven and nine, and uh, um, only in 2.9% we had to use a different size that was originally selected. Monotherapy was used in 50% of the cases, and uh, we had uh, 6.8 thromboembolic complications, 0.4% hemorrhagic um, um, complications and um, in 4.6 percent of the cases we needed to do a different uh, therapy strategy which was web or coils in this case the uh, overall outcome I think is uh, respective um, uh, and the retreatment rate was 2.5 percent of the aneurysm adequate occlusion if you call it with uh, Raymond Roy which is difficult in these uh, kind of devices I know but it's about 90 percent and MRS2 was also, we had only 10% ruptured cases. Very nice. Um, com in comparison to the other studies, uh, I think with uh, these uh, uh, 300 patients almost, we can uh, compete a little bit. It's pretty similar to the other um, intracellular devices. Obviously, we have uh, uh, strong limitations in this study. It's a retrospective design. It's a lack of blinding in these cases. We start now selecting groups of these patients uh, and retrospectively review with a collab. But uh, in this uh, case series, it's no collab uh, included. But it's a real world uh, typical collection of data. And uh, it's the largest multicenter cohort. So now the occlusion rates are comparable. It's an acceptable safety profile. And I think uh, single antiplatelet agent preferred and recommended and straightforward sizing. And you can read it in the recent uh, Journal of Neurointerventional Surgery. It's recent, recently published. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions about the C's trial or the contour? No stunned. Okay. Um, we will uh, conclude the session. Over to you.